Hello, welcome to Shad Life. I am pretty surprised at what I just saw. Um, I'm getting that Canyon Grand Canyon 5 on Monday according to FedEx. And when I saw when I was getting it, for some reason I thought, oh, I'm going to go, you know, check out the specifications on it. Um, and saw some things I was a little surprised about for a bike in this price range. So uh, I'm in the basement right now with all my wonderful machines here. But let me go up on my computer and show you exactly what I'm talking about. Because I'm just, I'm a little floored. <laughs> because what I thought I was getting was a size small 29 inch like cross country bike on a budget, right? But that's not the case <laughs> let's take a look okay so here i am on the site here's the bike i ordered right um so i i knew about this bike a little bit but i didn't look in in the granular details um and i'm very surprised so what happens is when i'm going to get a bike and of course I'm going to talk to you about it. Um, I, know, I saw that I was going to get it on Monday. So that's about a week and a half delivery time from when I ordered it. Um, and so I thought, well, let me, you know, gather some information. So when I present it to you guys um, during the unboxing and the assembly of it and everything, I have all the details, right? So I did the size thing and it ended up being that I, uh, they recommended a size small, so I ordered the small, which is generally what size I do ride. So that's fine. $6.99, amazing price, right? But then I was like, okay, I want to know all these specs. So I, you know, I read through this stuff when I bought the bike, right? But this right here, geometry and dimensions, here's kind of the shocker. Let's start off with the first thing. Let's forget about that right now and look at the component geometry. I didn't realize that they were doing this. So size small is the second column here, right here, right? Um, if you scroll down to wheel size, they do 27.5 for extra small and 27.5 for small, and then 29 inch on up. I thought they were all 29ers and I'm not disappointed. I mean, I do think Canyon should be a little more like upfront about the wheel size when you select a small or extra small, like they need to specify that more. But honestly, I think all bike companies should do this. I think the wheel size shouldn't just be standard across the board. I think when you're a shorter, smaller person, you should run a little bit smaller wheel and there's not a huge difference between 29 inch and 27.5 and only somebody like me who you know you might call a bike snob or something like that or somebody who has lots of experience or whatever you want to call me um i notice a difference like i noticed when i rode the jaffe compared to the hey duke 27.5 versus 29. There's a pretty significant difference in the wheel feel to me, but I'm an experienced rider. I, I feel those things, but for most people, there isn't. But if I'm to be honest here, I actually prefer 27.5 over 29 inch. Um, and so I'm excited that this bike actually comes with a 27.5 wheel instead of a 29 inch wheel. So that's a plus for me. Um, but that isn't as mind-blowing as this next thing I'm going to show you. Keep in mind, this is a $699 bike. Like, that's pretty cheap in the bike world, right? And it's already got some pretty amazing spec. It's got 12-speed Shimano Dior uh, drivetrain. Like, that's crazy. But we're going to go, you have all these uh, specs here, um, which are fine. You know, uh, they, they show you your height, what you should have. Um, but if we scroll down and look at chain stay length, this is almost entirely unheard of. They have a different chain stay length for each size. 
So for the extra small and small, it's the same, 423, fine. But then for the uh, medium, a little bit longer, for the large, even longer yet, and for the extra large, longer yet. Like, that is unheard of. What I have seen is like small and extra small will have a shorter chain stay, and then when you get to medium, large, extra large, they'll go a little longer. But I have not seen a frame where it's this granular. I'm sure there's other frames out there, but they are going to be more on that higher end bracket. Keep in mind, this is a $600. And ninety nine dollar bike, um, so that is a shocker. And four twenty three is short, so it's a twenty seven five wheel and a four twenty three uh, chainstay length. That's gonna be pretty spicy as far as like you know the front wheel coming up, things like that. And then when I go look at things like uh, where's the reach. For me, uh, 405, you know, that's right in there. It's not super long, which I like. Um, I don't know, probably look at the component geometry. Uh, we can look at stem length. Yeah, stem length, 60 millimeters. So, you know, it's like right in there with what you would expect from like a modern day XC bike geometry. So I'm... I'm going to be pretty stoked about this bike. Like I didn't, I would not expect a, a $699, I just say $700. So I have to stop saying so much, but I would just not expect that a bike in this price range would be spec like this. You know, you would think that they'd be trying to save as much money as possible. And by doing that, Anytime you change a chainstay length, you gotta do a whole new jig. Anytime you change any of the frame geometry, they gotta set up a whole new jig setup for that geometry and tube lengths and all that stuff. Like, it's a complete retooling for every little geometry change. They're, they're used to doing it on the front end, but to also do it on the back end, that's impressive. I'm impressed with Canyon on that. And to do it in this price point, right? Keep in mind, Canyon is a direct-to-consumer, so they do take out the middle uh, person, which would be the shop, right? Um, but yeah, they definitely um, did a pretty amazing job, and I haven't even gotten the bike. So this is going to be interesting when this bike comes in and I start taking an actual physical look at it. I wonder if I'm going to still be as impressed. So there you have it. That is uh, why I'm shocked. I still am. I mean, I, I've been riding bikes for a long time, buying bikes for a long time, and I just haven't quite seen something like this, even on more expensive bikes. I'm sure there are some companies that do that like fine adjustment for every size, but it's not very common. And to see that in a bike that's $699, didn't I just say I was gonna just say $700 to make it easy? Yeah, anyway, so yeah, um, spring is not springing. <laughs> it is almost the end of March. And if you look out my window, look at the snow is still there. What is going on? I just want to ride my bike. Well, I did. I went down to Bentonville and did it. I'm actually thinking I might try to go a little south of here to ride. Uh, I'm thinking somewhere in Iowa or whatever. Um, just so I can get in some dirt early because it's going to be a while. I'm going to guess here in Minnesota, it's probably the trails won't start opening up, at least in the, the southern part, the cities, until late April or early May. Uh, and up in Cuyuna, maybe even, even later than that, they've gotten tons of snow. This has been like the, I believe, the eighth snowiest year ever <laughs> in this region. So there you have it. Um, I will get out and ride on the road and do what I can to review that bike, just like I did with these other bikes the other day. Um, and maybe do some urban stuff. I, I keep promising that I'm going to do that, but there's plenty of stairs and fun things you can find in urban settings while I wait for the trails to open up. 
I appreciate your support for my channel. Please like and subscribe. Peace.